I was born born. Hi, Pop. How are you? Hello, Mr. Miller. Hi, Gary. Hi. You ain't fixing to go into the roofing, are you, Pop? I sure am. Better not. It's gonna be rough. Well, that's just what I'm hoping, Doobie. Now, look, you're liable to get hurt. See here, Sonny. I can rope calves better with my left hand than you youngins can with both hands. Now, look, Pop, we mean it. We know you're good, but you're not as young as you used to be. After that tumble you took the other day... Well, listen, that wasn't my fault. And I didn't get hurt no how, did it? Maybe not, but it shook you up plenty. This is the last day. No use crowding your luck. You get pitched off and it's liable to break you in two. Listen, Bob, I've had so many bones broken, I'm practically glued together. Now, all you young'uns have to do is to take care of yourselves and keep out of my way when I get in there. We are, Brock. <laughs> It's gonna be a cinch for you, Pop. They're just scared you're gonna beat them. That's the spirit, Gary. Bye, my boy. Bye. His leg is broken. You'll have to be destroyed. No, no. No, I won't let you. No, it'll have to be done, old man. Don't you understand? Why, we can't fix a horse's broken leg. No, I, I won't let you. Don't let him do it, Pop. No, I won't, Gary. Look, Christian. Don't you understand? Briar's my living. Oh, it ain't. Only that. But he's my horse. Don't you understand what that means to me? You can't shoot him now. Listen. You've got to give me a chance to do something for him. Let me keep him until morning. If I can't do anything for him by then, you can handle him any way you want to. But I've got to have a chance for him. And I promise you this, mister, that I won't let Briar suffer. I just want to help him. You can't do this. All right. All right, old man. You're gonna be all right, Briar. All you have to do is just take it easy, sure. Well, how are you, boy? I got some of the boys, Gary, to help us load him into the trailer. Put the sling under him till we get him to a vet. And you're gonna stay in the back and you keep awake. I sure will, Pop. All right. Now, come on, man. We'll ease him up easy now. Come on. Help him, Ralph. Lovely service. Thank you, Mrs. Crawford. It's nice to have you back again. It's becoming a habit. I guess it's the minister. I tried to telephone you yesterday. I hope I'm not too late with my invitation. Can you come to dinner? Sandra and I would both love to have you. I'm sorry. I promised Mrs. Crawford, that is your sister-in-law, that I'd have dinner at home today. Pamela's coming over. Pamela? Oh, I'm sure that'll be very nice. Well, can we steal you for supper? You see, Sandy's only home weekends. We'd so enjoy having you. Thank you. If I can, I'll let you know. I'm going to call you to make sure. All right. Bye, Sandy. Goodbye. That was a fine message this morning. This may be your first pastorate, but you're doing good work, my boy. A little unconventional and too fisted, but that's what we've needed for a long time. Thank you, Mr. Kane. I have to say what I feel. And let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> I'm for you, young fella. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Kane. Goodbye. 
Reverend Owen, your sermon this morning was the best yet. Thank you, Miss Crawford. And your organ playing is the finest I've heard in the six months I've been here. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't any better, was it, David? The collection, I mean. No, the building fund still has only $96.40 in it. Well, it wasn't fair to put such a load on you in your first church. I asked for it. I knew the church was in trouble when I accepted the job, but I thought I could solve the problem. Right now, I'm not so sure. But I haven't given up yet. If only some of the members who can would loosen up. I heard Charlie Kane giving you three cheers instead of $500. I'll have to beat that situation. Mr. Kane says I'm unconventional. If he and the congregation only knew how unconventional I could be to save that church. <laughs> Aunt Frances could do it in a minute if she wanted to. And I know how she could be persuaded. How? Marry her. Marry? She certainly wants that. Marry her? Well, why not? She's young and loaded with money. But she guards very carefully. Except when she wants something. And she wants you. There must be a less drastic way than that. And besides, I don't like you trying to marry me off. I was in hopes you'd... Still, it is a solution, and she is beautiful. Oh, Marshal. I got a horse here with a bad leg. Can you steer me to the nearest veterinary? There's no vet in Winona. See, the accident happened almost 24 hours ago, and he's suffering plenty already. Well, that's too bad. Let's take a look at him. All right. Hello, son. Hello. What seems to be wrong with him? Well, I was contesting down at this Toulouse rodeo. Kind of got jammed up a little bit. Rodeo officials said he broke his leg and they wanted to shoot him. Of course, I couldn't let him do that. So I sneaked him out until I could find somebody to help me take care of him. Of course, he may not walk as good as he used to, but better than letting him die. Yes. Let's take him to the backyard and see what we can do for him. They said his leg was broken? Well, his foot was all twisted under him. Sure looked like it. What's your word, Parson? Well, his leg's not broken. There's this crack someplace I can't feel, and that I don't think. No, I think it's just a bad sprain. Do you know about horses? I've been handling them all my life. I was raised on a ranch. My father was a veterinary. Well, then I'd say that you were just a godsend to us. Keep him off his feet for five or six weeks, and he'll be as good as new. You mean that, Parson? I'd bank on it. You had dinner yet? No. Oh, we figured to eat after we got Briar fixed up. Pamela, ask your mother to hold dinner for a little while. Have her set two more plates on the table for our guests. Of course. Oh, but, Mark, we can't sure let you can. in. As long as you show your appreciation by eating a lot. Well, that won't be very hard to do. Didn't you tell me that there was a vet over at uh, Dorchester? Yes, but we got plenty of room for him right here. What, you mean that you'll keep Briar here and that you'll treat him? Well, sure. We'll find a place for you and Gary, too. Well, that's mighty swell of you, Parson. We can't let you do that. Because you don't know us. We're just a couple of tramps, at least I am, following rodeos, picking up a little bit of change. Well, we could be anybody. Yes, you could be. But I wouldn't worry about that. And there's another thing. Briar getting himself bunged up this way just as I was starting to win done me out of my prize money. I ain't got over about 10 or 15 bucks. <laughs> Who said anything about money? I know that you don't make too much. And to try and spread it over the three of us. You know, Pop, as long as you're trying to do the right thing, you don't have to worry about what anybody says. You never have to worry about where the money's coming from. I guess you're right at that, Parson. We could rig up a sling right there in that garage. I don't have a car anyway. And after dinner, we'll send Gary up to the drugstore for some medicine. That's mighty fine of you. Come on, I'll help you get him out of the trailer. All right. Hello. You, you're new here, aren't you? Yeah, I just got here. I thought so. I know most of the ki children, I mean boys and girls in this part of town. Are you going to live here? Yeah, I reckon so for a while anyway. Where did you come from? No place. Pop, that's my grandfather. He and I travel together. We're in show business. Oh, an actor? No, none of that painted up imitation business for us. We do the real stuff. Rodeos, bronc busting, bulldogging, calf roping, and everything. You mean you handle horses all the time? Do all that dangerous riding? Well, I enter in the junior event sometimes. I've been riding since I was four years old. Well, that must be wonderful. I love horses. I love everything about them. Do you have any horses of your own? Do we? 
We've got the greatest horse in the world. He's a thoroughbred, a champion. And you're really going to stay here in a sleepy town like Winona? Why? Oh, Briar, that's our horse. He had an accident yesterday in Toulouse. He hurt his right foreleg. We're going to stay here until he gets well. Gee, I'd like to see him. Would you? Come on, I'll show him to you. Oh. Well, hello, little lady. I see you brought back more than medicine, Gary. Yes, sir. She's Sandra Crawford. She's Miss Palmer's cousin. She asked if she could see Briar. Well, she's more than welcome. He's beautiful, Mr. Miller. Who is he? Will he be all right? I reckon so. That's the way we aim to make him, anyhow. Could I... Can I touch him? Sure. Briar's a smart horse. He knows when he sees a pretty girl. And he likes him, just the same as Gary and me. Sandra. Sandra. What on earth are you doing here? I'm just... Back here with strange stable men. People you shouldn't even be seen with. Mother, please. Sandra, I've forbidden you to talk to such people. I thought I saw you come in here. Now come along with me. It was all I thought, ma'am. I've no doubt. It was Look. just because she wanted to come back here. Look, to... my dear, I need no information from you. Just a moment, ma'am. You see, Gary's no ordinary stable boy. And the little lady just came in to say hello to Briar. That's the horse. You see, we're rodeo performers. Oh, rodeo performers. Rodeo performers? Why, that's even... I wonder if Mr. O... Just what are you doing here? Well, you see, in the first place... Never mind, I don't care. Sandy, come on. See, that's the way to handle those kind, son. This is Crawford. Hello, Sandy. Hello, oh, David. How nice. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I'm dressed to do a little veterinarian work. Veterinarian? Yes, Mr. Miller's horse was injured yesterday, so I volunteered to take care of him. Oh, so they're friends of yours? Well, yes, for more than an hour now. Would you like to meet him? <laughs> Mrs. Crawford, this is Pop Miller, one of the most famous rodeo stars in the country. I'm very happy to know you. We're honored, ma'am. And this is his grandson, Gary. Hello. Hello. Oh, we've met. Yes. Why don't you go in the house while we see what we can do for the horse? Pamela's here with her mother. Oh, Pamela's here. Oh, yes. Yes, come on. Mother, may I please stay and watch? Well, of course, darling. <laughs> if Mr. Owens doesn't mind. Why, certainly. Glad to have you. We'll be in a little bit. All right. taking on pretty much of a burden. You know, your salary was never meant to cover such an expense. We manage you all right. But, David, people are talking about your having him there. A profane old man, a boy who doesn't even go to school. I wouldn't subject myself to that kind of gossip. I'd be much more concerned what people might say if I turned out a penniless old man and his grandson with an injured horse. No, Mrs. Crawford, I'm afraid what people say doesn't interest me. David, we're not exactly strangers. Don't you think you could begin calling me Francis pretty soon? Well, I must maintain my dignity, but all right, Francis. That's better. You know, I'd like to feel free to talk to you as a friend. Right now, I'm concerned about Sandra. I wouldn't worry about Sandra. But I do. Poor darling. I wish she had a father. David, it isn't much fun just having her home weekends. Having a way in Dodge Straw a week's school. Then why do it? Because it's better there than any school here. She must have the best. But it isn't only that. What else? My business affairs take up so much of my time, I can't give her the attention I should. Then why don't you give up your business? Sandra's worth it. Well, David, you know it's impossible, as long as I have no one to do these things for me. Oh, David, I get so lonesome at times. It's possible to be that with dozens of people around. But the right one isn't there. I hope you find the right person for your sake and Sanders. I have. Only he's too busy with other people, other affairs. Oh, I wish. David, it isn't easy to have the sole trusteeship of a fortune as large as the one my father left me. I'd so gladly share it with the right person. Someone I could love and trust. And why don't you share it with the church? Oh, that again. Unless a miracle happens, we stand to lose our church in six weeks. Well, David, I could be persuaded to help a great deal. 
under certain conditions. There can be no conditions of a gift offered to save a church. No. Goodbye, Mrs. Crawford, and thanks for your time. Hello, Pop. Good evening, Parker. I see the church trustees are here already, but I thought I'd drop by and say hello to you and Briar. Well, he's doing just all right. He's doing fine. Good. Something bothering you, Pop? You know, Parson, I've been doing a heap of thinking. We've been sponging on you too long already. And without money, you can't keep going on, no matter how good you've been to us. And another thing, I know that you've been getting in Dutch on account of us. I wouldn't worry about that. Well, you know, I've always been more or less of an independent cuss all my life. Paid my way as I went along. I can't stop. Besides, I figured out a way to fix things up. How? Well, I understand that they're starting a wild horse roundup over at Caldwell in a couple of days. I can go over there and pick myself up three or four hundred bucks. Done a lot of time before. How long ago, Pop? Oh, about 10, 15 years. You mean 25 or 30, don't you? No, Pop, that's too rugged for you. Not for me, it ain't. And besides, Parson, I've got to have some money. I want to send Gary to a real school. Sure you do. But that's not the way. Now, don't you worry about me. I can take care of myself all right. I know you can, but it's not a matter of days. It's a matter of weeks. No, Pop, you got to promise me right here and now that you won't try it. Well, bless my soul. I didn't think that you'd be so dead set against it, Parson. I am. Will you promise me? Okay. I promise. The way you put it up to me, I can't hardly refuse you. That's better. Good night, Briar. Don't worry, Pop. Good night. Good night, Parson. Boy, it looks like it's going to be tougher on you than it is on me. Dad busted, I hate to turn down a chance like that. But you know, you can't argue with a fella that's been as good to us as the parson has, can you? But Dad busted anyhow. Good night. Now, sir, the uh, board of trustees is solidly behind you, but uh, very little disturbed. Well, as you know, in a town as small as ours, gossip is most undesirable. Gossip is always undesirable. It's one of the cheapest and lowest forms of conversation. Yes, of course, but uh, I'm afraid you don't quite understand. Uh, frankly, it's uh, somewhat embarrassing to have our own pastor discussed unfavorably. Yes, there's, there's talk. Not only of your close association with people who are, well, little more than vagabonds, uh, circus followers, if you will, but that you keep them for weeks here in the parsonage. Precincts which, well, in a sense, should be considered almost as sacred as the church itself. Pop Miller and Gary certainly do not desecrate it. I plan to let them stay as long as they need help. That, gentleman is my decision. I plan to stand by it. I'm disappointed and sorry that you disapprove. This boy, he should be in school. Pop Miller knows educational laws. He himself instructs Gary and sees that he studies. Uh, from what we know of him, he's hardly qualified as a teacher. <laughs> But all this discussion is ridiculous. Yes, it is. I thought this meeting was called to discuss a far more important problem. One that reflects more discredit upon you men on the Board of Trustees than the presence of an old man does upon me. Now, just a moment, Pastor. In a few weeks, we face the loss of our church for one of a few thousand dollars. I think it would be much more to the point if you gentlemen concentrated on that problem, rather than whether I gave a helping hand to a small boy and a man who needs it. Promise or no promise. That night settled. Good night. You're rather rough on us, Pastor. More so than we like. I'm sorry, it was necessary. Perhaps. You too have a responsibility in this matter. I think I'm shouldering my responsibility. Are you? Entirely? You know, there's a way in which you could solve all the church's financial problems. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't think of stepping into your personal affairs, but this is a crisis. Well, the widow Frances Crawford and her very obvious interest in you? You're stepping too far into my personal affairs. What you suggest is preposterous. Why? It is best that the minister be married. Mrs. Crawford is young, beautiful, charming. 
and wealthy. It's an insult to me and my integrity to suggest such a cold-blooded alliance. It would violate every ideal and conception of marriage that I've held and which I preach. Uh, just a moment, Pastor. It's... You want me to prevent a disaster caused by your neglect? My neglect? Look at Winona. It's a prosperous town. Your homes are beautiful. You've taken care of yourself while you've let your church slip into a financial and physical ruin. And you want me to save the pieces. My personal life is not on the auction block. I'm sorry, Pastor. Good night. Good night. Pop. Well, thanks, huh? Don't you think you've had about enough? You've taken a tough beat in the past couple of weeks. You're all beat up and tuckered out. Oh, I'm all right. I've been in more wild horse roundups than you've got years. Well, I wouldn't doubt that, but you'd be smart if you quit now and went home. You've made yourself a few dollars. Well, not many. What? Why, there two? Not unless you brought one. Oh, sure. I always carry a spare saddle in my pocket, just for times like this. Come on, Gary, get Briar ready and I'll get going. Not with that saddle, you won't. Mrs. Crawford made a deal for Briar and nothing else. Gary's right, Joe. But gosh, I might... I beg your pardon, sir, but I can't ride this horse bareback. Maybe if he had a steering wheel and a gear shift, I could, but... A deal's a deal. And we're keeping the saddle. Sorry, Joe, I can't help you. Well, you can lend me the blanket, can't you? Sure, Joe, sure. We'll lend you the blanket. Briar won't let Joe ride him without a saddle. Yes, sir, I know it all right. But he shouldn't be riding my horse. Suppose he falls off and gets hurt. Oh, Joe won't get hurt. He might get a little tired. But in that case, he can always lay down on the blanket. What are we going to do now, Mr. Owens? Don't worry about it, Gary. A horse like Briar can't disappear for long. Yeah, but why didn't he come back here? He knows Papa near here. Why, he's been with us for... Hello, Mrs. Crawford. Hello. Has that horse been back here yet? No, not yet. I never will. I didn't want to get into this. See what happens? He'll come back, Mrs. Crawford. Where's Francis a day or two ago? Oh, David, I don't want you to think I'm cold and grasping. I'm not really. It's just this has all upset me very much. I know, and I'm sorry, Francis. Well, I simply can't wait for him to reappear. You may as well know I'm offering $50 reward for his recovery. It's Briar! Brian, the horse I told you about. Don't tell anybody, promise. We promise, won't we? Sure. But what are you going to do with him? Take care of him. Right now, I'm going to ride him. Help oh, me. Yeah. Sure I can. Remember your promise. Don't tell anybody. Not anybody. Where are you going? Oh, a special place where nobody will find him. Let's go, Briar. Well, bust my buttons. Hi, Sandy. Come on, darling. Where in tarnation did you get that horse? And what are you doing here? What's the idea of breaking up a man's morning right in the middle of my housework? What's the matter? You should call Father and you again. Call fa <coughs> Oh, yes. <coughs> yeah, it's been killing me all morning. Maybe you want to take some more of your cough medicine. Yeah. Think I should? 
Well, Sandy, that's right nice of you. <clears throat> there, now I feel better. And now, young lady, what's this all about? I don't see you very often, and then it's usually when you're in trouble. I can say the same for you, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, Grandpa, I know how you can make $50 very fast. $50? But I wish you wouldn't. Good, now I'm a mite too old to wrestle anybody, Sandy. If you want to make it, all you have to do is take Briar back to Mother and Winona. Back to Mother? Don't tell me you rode that horse all the way from over there. Of course not. I found him just a little while ago. Oh. Mother's offering a $50 reward for its return. Well, that's more than she ever offered for my return. Uh, how come she wants this horse so bad? She hates horses. And if there's a reward up, why don't you collect it yourself? Because she does hate horses, yes. and she hates yeah, the man who owns this one, and I don't want her to have it. Look. And that's why I brought it here, because I want yeah, no, to No, 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 because... no, no, no. A man would have to be in his prime to keep up with that fast talk. Now, you mean, you want me to keep him here, in hiding? How are you going to hide a horse? But, Sandy, it's going to be awfully hard to keep a horse where nobody will find it. Well, can't you put it with all those pink elephants that nobody but you see? Yeah, I think you got something there. Now, don't you worry about the horse, honey. We take care of him. Well, you won't take that $50, and you won't let anybody else take it, will you? Now, don't you worry, honey. You leave it to your old grandpappy. Pop Miller had countless thousands of friends in all parts of the country. He would wish to be here if they knew his passing in this a community where he was a stranger. So in their name, we few who have grown to know him and to love him, pay him this last homage. Grateful for the brief hour of friendship that we spent with him. And as for Pop himself, he can truthfully say, I put up a good fight. I finished my course and I'm rolling home. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Amen. I didn't have a chance before. What? Pop would like to know this, too. That's why I'm telling you here. I've got Briar, Gary. Got him safe in Dorchester. Briar? You have Briar? Yes. I found him. I've got him hid at my grandfather's. Oh, gosh, Sandy, how is he? But we'll have to keep it a secret, or else they'll take him away from us. We mustn't tell anybody, not even Mr. Owens. Did you hear that, Pop? Briar's okay, and I'm gonna live with Mr. Owens. Oh, gosh, Pop. Gary, Pop was a pretty brave man. I don't think he wants you to stay here and cry for him. I'll be back to see as often as I can. Mr. Crawford, it's sure swell of you letting me come over here. Oh, that's okay, son, and so are you. I reckon Sandy was right about you. You sure took good care of Briar, you and your grandfather. 
Let's ride them. Let's both ride them. Can't we, Graham? You mean both at the same time? Uh-huh. Oh, I think that's too heavy, even for Briar. Maybe it would help uh, if you give him some of your cough medicine. Uh, yeah, but... No, 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 no. I reckon Briar can handle it all right. Come on, you get on. Come on over here. Look at that. Wasn't that fun? Here, I'll oh. help you now. Now, get up there. Now, you're sure, Gary, you can handle them all right, okay? Sure, I've done it lots of times. You mean you've had other girls riding here like this? No, you're the first girl. All right, let's go. Now, Gary, no one-armed driving. You know why I sent for you, Gary? Sure, to see Briar. That's only part of it. I had to talk over something with you. Something awful serious. What is it? You won't be able to pay Mother the money on time, will you? No. They sent the $40 pop turn in the roundup for Mr. Owen to send to your mother. That leaves over $100 that has to be paid to him the 28th. And I promised Grandpa I'd take Briar back if the money wasn't all paid. We, so we have to get it somehow. Yeah. How? There's a big sulky race here in the 28th in Dorchester. And if Briar could win that, the first prize is $5,000. That would pay back Mother and leave you a lot besides. Then I could pay for that church debt that Mr. Owen's so worried about. Well, not exactly worried. He never worries about anything. He just works hard and says he knows that everything will be all right. He's sure swell to me. I wish I could do this for him. We have to, Gary, and we mustn't tell anybody. Even Grandpa wouldn't hear of it. That's why I wanted to come out riding. Well, one of the reasons. So we could talk it over. I found out something else. What? Mr. Felix, who owns the stable, likes me. And I told him a friend of mine might want to enter his horse in that sulky race. But that he'd have to rent a sulky. And he said he had one he'd rent. And I thought we could get it tomorrow morning, before school, and take Briar over to the fairground. And maybe you could drive him and see if he's fast enough to win that race. Gee, that's a swell idea. But I haven't got any money. Not much more than my bus fare back to Winona. Mr. Felix said he'd rent the sulky for two dollars. And I have more than two dollars left out of my allowance. Well, yeah. we can do it, Gary. Sure sounds good. Are you sure you can drive them the same as in a race? Sure. I'm going back there for a start. Now, when I come by, you check me. If we can go around this track in less than three minutes, we've got a chance to win the sweepstakes. But what'll I check you in? Oh. Here's Pop's watch. One minute. and 25 seconds. Gee, that's swell, Sandy. We just got to enter Briar in that race Saturday. But we're just kidding ourselves. They won't let me or you drive him in the race. And we got to keep everything so secret. We couldn't ask anybody else to drive him. And oh, shucks, it just won't work. And anyway, it costs money to enter a horse in a race. How much money? Oh, about $50 for the kind of race we want to enter him in. Is Briar fast enough to win that race? Sure he is then we've got to enter him, whether we're kids or not. Well, I bet I could raise the money to enter him. You could how? From the kids' at school. They all have pretty good allowances. Of course, we spend it all. But if I hurry, I bet I could do it. But then you'd have to tell them all about Briar. No, I could make it sort of mysterious, like a secret. Oh, I could do it, Gary. We've just got to get a driver. Yeah, that's the trouble. 
No, it ain't. Mr. Owen says if you need something bad enough, and it's right, you always get it no matter what. We just gotta have faith. And you need the works, too. <laughs> You're right, Sandy. Here, Sandy, you can have it all. How are you kids coming? I sit down 20 cents. I have seven dollars. Somebody put a slug in my bank. Here, Sandy. Sandy. Gee, Sandy, I don't know how you do it. All we girls are donating. We don't even know what it's for. All I can tell you is that it's for a very worthy cause. And please remember, Jeannie, don't tell a soul. Not a single soul. How can I tell anyone when I don't know anything myself? Won't you give me just one little clue? Nope. It's got to be a secret. But I'm so curious. Jeannie, please don't ask me. I'll be thinking so much about it, I won't be able to sleep night. Here's a dollar back. Go buy yourself some sleeping pills. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a private reverie, or can anyone join in? You're off early. Yes, Mr. Hodges had to go out of town, so he said I could have the afternoon off. I thought I'd come over to your place and help Mother. It's a good excuse, anyway. Excuse? For what? <laughs> it's a secret. How's Gary? Does he still grieve much? Yes and no. He puzzles me a little, though. I don't know whether it's the influence of Sandy, but he seems more cheerful since he's tripped to Dorchester. I'm surprised he doesn't miss Briar more than he does. Maybe he's reconciling himself to the inevitable. I can't believe it's that. Briar's situation's very serious to you, isn't it? Yes, in a way. The money's due on Saturday, and we haven't it. There's only one thing to do. If and when Briar's found, he must be sold to pay the debt. It could be hard on Gary. I don't know, maybe too hard. What is it, David? I've been walking for an hour trying to decide what to do. You can't always solve your problems the way you want to. Sometimes it's the way you dread. But if it's the only way, what can you do? You mean there is a way that you know of one to solve it? Yes, I've known of it for some time. In fact, we both laughed about it. Oh. You mean you're, you're going to ask Aunt Fran to... If I only cared about her, but... I can't let the church go under if it's up to me. When the church moves from this corner, it should be to a bigger church, from necessity, not to makeshift quarters and poverty. Marriage is a very sacred thing, Pamela. You'd make it sacred, David. I've thought this out day after day, night after night, trying to decide what to do. I have an ideal of marriage, one that I hope someday to realize, but this, everything in my mind, everything in my conscience tells me it's wrong, but is it? Is it just selfishness prompting me? Why do you talk to me about this, David? Because you're the only person in the world I've ever wanted to talk to about love and marriage. Pam. Oh, David. I... Here's Aunt Fran. I'll be in the kitchen. This is a surprise. Won't you come in? Hello, David. I mean, I'm two days early. Two days? Lady Shylock. As a matter of fact, I did want to talk to you about that. I... May I sit down? Why, of course, do. Thank you. I mean, I use every excuse as a chance to see you. You're flattering, Francis. No. Just wishful. And brazen, too. But to be serious for a moment, and practical, is there any prospect for that loan being paid on Saturday night? At the moment, no. Well, I have information that I think will lead to the horses being in my hands very soon. And I certainly don't want him. He'll have to be sold. Of course, anything over the amount due will be paid to you and the boy. That horse means a great deal to Gary Francis. Well, you can't afford to pay the loan. And the boy can't possibly earn it. I think when you know me a little longer, you'll be grateful for my business judgment. I'd be grateful? Yes. I hope so. I'm glad you've decided I'm not so hard. I hope that concession from you is an inkling of a much deeper sentiment. I told you I was brazen. David, am I such a repulsive person? On the contrary, Francis. You're not being ruled by your passion to prove yourself a business expert. You can be completely charming. Isn't it possible that what you call a passion for business is just something that 
fills a void in a very lonely life? I'm very lonely, David. Oh, David, a minister shouldn't be oppressed by money worries. Well, undoubtedly, it would give him a lot of time for other services. Yes, that's what I mean. Oh, David, don't make me humble myself. I know you understand. I do understand you, Francis. You permitted yourself to become utterly selfish. Engage everything in terms of what you want and what you can buy to satisfy yourself. I didn't come here for a lecture, David. No, but perhaps you need one. Whenever you give anything, it always has strings attached to it. It's not from the heart, it's what can I get in return for this? So that's what you think of me. You despise me. No, I feel sorry for you. Sorry? You feel sorry for me? Yes, sincerely. You spend all your time trying to make more and more money that you don't need, to the point that you neglect what should be your most priceless possession, Sandy. Sandy is my affair, if you don't mind. And I'm not so blind as you think. It's Pamela. She's worked her way in, torn me down. It's not Pamela. It is Pamela. I can't deny my feelings about Pamela. And she's everything I'm not, of course. It's hard for me to believe that anyone could sit in that church, Sunday after Sunday, and watch it be destroyed for the want of a gift that you could so easily afford, and it'd be such a blessing to the church. Which is precisely what I'm going to do. I came here humbling myself, shaming myself, willing to do it, knowing what I could do for you, and wanting the chance to do it, in return for a little happiness for myself. I've overlooked the fact that you've alienated my daughter from me, Encouraged her to associate with people whom I detest. Well, very well, you can have your sugary, penniless Pamela. And that uncouth little tramp, Gary. And you can also have the pleasure, as I will, of seeing your church fall apart. And I'll not lift one finger or give one cent to save it for you. Francis, I beg. Yes, you beg. You always beg. Because you were made to be a beggar. David. I'm sorry, David. We both got to try to help her, Pam. I'm afraid she won't accept much from either of us. I think for a moment I almost asked her to marry me. You know you would have broken my heart, don't you? No, but... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Owens. I didn't mean to interrupt, but could I see it for a minute? It's awful important. And Pam is very private. Oh, I see. I'll give you exactly five minutes. Gary, let's sit down and have a little talk, huh? I saw Mrs. Crawford drive up. I had a hunch, so I listened to nearly everything she said. Gary. I know, sir. But Mr. Owen, she's Sandy's mother and all. But she ain't like Sandy. And oh, gee, Mr. Owen, she was crowding you. I just have to tell you right now. Gary, what are you talking about? Friar, sir. He's not lost. Sandy found him in Dorchester. She's hiding him at Grandfather Crawford's. That's why she told me to come up there so I could see him. In Dorchester, Sandy? Yes, sir. Briar's entered in that race Saturday. Sandy raised enough money for the entry fee. And I tried Briar out myself. He did the mile and 225 the first time out. And I know Briar can win, sir. But we haven't got a driver yet. But we'll get one somehow. And I know Briar can win. And then you won't have to. Have to. Gary, you and Sandy are priceless. But Briar should have been returned to Mrs. Crawford. No, sir, he shouldn't. He's got to run that race, win that money, and help the church. That's why we did it, sir. Gary. Gary. Maybe our cause is big enough that we can keep him for another two days. And I hope as much as you do that you get a good driver. Gosh, Mr. Owens, you're the best there is. And that sure takes a load off of my mind. Yeah, it puts a new one on mine, but I'll see if I can't carry it. You and I will leave for Dorchester early in the morning. Gee, that's swell, Mr. Owens. Now I've got to do some more work. I'll see you later. Bye, Gary. have to tell Sandy's grandfather about everything. Yeah, I suppose so. But he's on our side anyway. That's what I thought. That's why we shouldn't keep any secrets from him. That'll give us a whole day to find a good driver for Briar. With you taking it over, I know we can find one, Mr. Owens. Sandy and I sure didn't know what to do. I couldn't stay here. But she's smart, but she's also pretty young. Don't you underestimate Sandy. She's done pretty well. Yeah. Hey, look, there's Briar. I wonder who's driving him. Hey, Sandy! Come on, Grandma, come on! Hi, Sandy. Hi, Gary. Who's that driving Briar? It's Gramps, 
Isn't he doing swell? Sure is. Hello, Mr. Rowland. Hello, Sandy. This is Reverend Owens, Grandpa. And Dale. How do you do, sir? We were looking for you. Thought maybe we were a little early. Not a bit too early, son. We were up before the chickens this morning. I thought we'd be early enough to see some of Grandpa's green snakes and pink elephants. Uh, no, 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 no. It's a little story for the children, you understand. <clears throat> well, what kind of medicine is it? It's a, it's a special prescription. I think I understand. We've got a driver, Gary. Grandpa, he knows all about everything, and he said he'd do it. That's right. Sandy finally broke down and confessed all about these mysterious goings-on. I didn't have a chance to write to Gary, and I didn't dare anyway. I didn't know Mr. Owens knew anything about it. Well, I didn't until yesterday, Sandy. And you mean you approve of all the shenanigans? Well, under the circumstances, I think it's all right. As long as we return Briar to Mrs. Crawford by tomorrow night. Oh, well, the way this horse is shaping up, I reckon you haven't got anything to worry about. You won't have to turn him in. That's what I wanted to hear. But uh, are you sure you're going to feel well enough to drive him? You mean I'm too old? Oh. <laughs> well, son, horses are in my blood. I drove home many a trotter before you were born. And if you've been to many sulky races lately, you know a man practically has to be 90 before he's considered old enough to drive one. I'm not 90, but sometimes I feel like it. But, uh, one other thing. Yeah, something wrong? Yes, Mrs. Crawford said she had a line on where Briar was. She said she could pick him up. Hmm, well, maybe we could have her arrested for impersonating a human being. If you can't let her find Briar before the race, she'd be sure to stop it. We gotta hide him someplace else. You know of a feasible place? Who's feasible? I know. Mr. Felix will hide him right in his own stable. I know he will if I ask him. Could we do it right now? Sure, He's honey. right near the school and I have to be there pretty quick. That's okay, honey. You can ride right in my lap this time. Uh, Brother Owens, you, you'll be staying over, of course. I wouldn't miss the race for anything. I got a lot at stake. Uh, don't worry. I'll bring you home a winner. I hope so. Hope those pink elephants and white rabbits aren't too much for Briar to pull. Yeah. Oh, there's only one animal I'm interested in from now on, and that's Briar. Good. We'll see you back at the house. Yeah. The tip I have was right, Mrs. Crawford. The horse is in Dorchester. But where in Dorchester? It's a big town. Where is he? I don't exactly know that, but it shouldn't be too hard to get hold of him. He's going to be in a race tomorrow. A race? But that's absurd. Maybe. But there's a horse named Briar entering the Dorchester Stake Race. That's the big race of the week. But that's ridiculous. No one would enter a stolen horse in a race. There must be another Briar. I don't think so, ma'am. Man I spoke to said somebody saw the horse harnessed to a sulky early in the morning, and the description sounds just like our Briar. But who entered him? He's entered the name of G. Miller. G. Miller. Gary Miller, that boy. So Mr. Owens has been holding out on me. But that boy's too young to drive a race. Did you get the name of the driver? Yes, ma'am. When I called up long distance, it said the name of the driver had just been filed. It's Crawford. So that's it. I'm beginning to see daylight. Sandy's mixed up in this thing, too. And her grandfather. All of them trying to keep from me what's rightfully mine. Shall I go after the horse, ma'am? No, Joe, not today. I'll go up tomorrow. So that's why Sandy wanted to stay there over Saturday. Yes, Joe, we'll go to the races tomorrow. We'll put a stop to their little game just before the big race. I like surprises, Joe. I'll pass out a couple. But the whole thing is a low, cheap double cross. People should know better than trying that on me. I think you're right, ma'am. I'm sure you will, Grandpa. I certainly will, honey. Your cough isn't bothering you, is it? My cough? No, no, not at all. Why? I thought I smelled your cough medicine. Oh, oh. Oh, well, I, I just took a little, just to make sure I won't cough. Good luck, Mr. Crawford. I, yeah, thank you, uh, San, uh, San, Oh, Mr. Owens. Yeah, you're very kind. Come on, Sandy, I'll show you this seat. See you after the race, Gary. Sure, we'll collect the money. Oh, hello, Joe. What are you doing here? I found Briar. Mrs. Crawford ordered me to get him right now. Oh, wait a minute, Joe. Join your mother, will you, honey? I'll see you later. You know Briar's in this race. That's just the idea. He ain't gonna be in no race. Well, I'm sure Mrs. Crawford could wait until after the race is over. I don't think so. She wants me to grab him right now. And I'd like to do a little grabbing that horse myself. Yeah, I can understand it. I'd like to stop you some way. Nothing's gonna stop me. Heaven forgive me. Come on. 
quick. Mr. Crawford's awful sick. Mr. Crawford. Uh, what happened? That's what I want to know. What happened? No, no, nothing happened. I, I got a turkey on my head, and I, I was just giving him a drink. I... I'm afraid Mr. Crawford won't be able to drive today. Oh, gee. He's a pretty sick man. Oh, who's sick? I never felt better. The way I feel, I could run the race without a horse and win it. Next race, the Dorchester Stakes. Winner's purse, $5,000. Give me a hand, Jerry. Driving Briar. I'll put a stop to that. Joe, what on earth? Well, I met Reverend Owens. He asked me where I was going. I told him I was going after Briar. Nothing would stop me. But he did. Clipped me on the chin. What? So he clipped you? Well, no one else was around. He'd do that. He'd even drive in a race. Of course he would. He's got to get that money, Mother. He'll do anything as long as it's honest. They're off! Yes, sir. I'd sure like you for a daddy. I'll try to make it up for you for Briar. 
Time heals a lot of things. It, it's worth it. It was for Pop that we're losing Briar. So it's okay, Mr. Owen's honest. How is he, Gary? Oh, he's just fine. I've been giving his leg a rub down to make sure. You know, the vet said that Mr. Owen stopped just in time or he'd been lame. Yes, I know, and he must never race again. Oh, that's all right. He won't mind if he can just stay around. Hello, everybody. I thought I'd find you back here. Hello, Sandy. How's Brian? Oh, he's just fine. When you get him over to your house. When what? Oh, Reverend Owen, my mother sent me back to give you this. Thank you, Sandy. Family. She's paid off the church debt. It's for paid in full. And she wishes us the best of luck. It worked, Mr. Owens. It worked. It always works, Gary. What did that mean, Cousin Pamela? Are you going to marry Reverend Owen? Yes, dear. Oh, that's wonderful. And are you going to adopt Gary? Just as quick as we can. Then Gary and I will be cousins, won't we? That's right. I think it's a pretty good idea myself. I don't. Why not? Because I want to marry you. And cousins can't get married. I think that can be arranged by the time you get around to it. Are you sure? Sure. I don't know how I could possibly live without Gary.